Greetings from Snake Mountain Boat Works on Sunday, May 10, 2020. It's Mother's Day and I'm in the shop dealing with a surprise that the 1956 19 foot Chris Craft Capri was hiding from us. But yesterday afternoon I heard Joe exclaim, almost there. He had done the 40 grit diagonally, the 60 grit lengthwise, and was just finishing up the 80 grit lengthwise when this erupted. Remember the outfit that took a circular saw to the foredeck left an open seam which I think you can almost see right there created a rather amazing water trap that over the years has been collecting right here on the starboard side of the bullnose and the forward ends of the top three planks on starboard. Were that not enough? What the hell, you might as well get the other side too. And they did. Thank you guys. Her owner is just as gleeful as can be. So, I have released these three planks yesterday and today and we will be preparing to attack the bullnose starting tomorrow and one of the uh, planks looks like it can be saved with a a short patch. Intriguingly, the least expensive and best solution for the the boat, the least expensive for her owner, and the best solution for the boat is likely to simply replace these other planks. And it's kind of sad because they are original planks. So I've released them so that starting tomorrow we can begin forming a fabricating a Dutchman repair to this bullnose. Joe will scribe a line following the grain right at the edge of where the rot starts. We're back to good wood here. Fortunately, the stem is in good shape that the rot is really concentrated right here. So what he will do is with chisels, he will, having scribed the line and made a cut, he will chisel wood back and create a sound surface upon which to mount the Dutchman patch and the Dutchman repair. Once he's has it roughed out and attached then using a hand plane sanding, uh, if you remember some of our ancient videos, uh, John LaFountain getting out his favorite quote finishing unquote tool, which was a, a 10 inch honking belt sander with 40 grit on it. And John could sculpt wood with that thing like you just couldn't believe. But in preparation for that and in preparation for remounting or mounting new planking or old, I'm doing what really must be done every time you remove planks from a wooden boat. 
Lots of people call me and say, well, they were number eight, so I'm just going to go back with number ten. So those will do pretty well, won't they? No, they will not. What you must do, and I used to be able to get maple, hard rock maple toothpicks. Now the best I can find is white ash, but they're, they're really pretty good. Um, a whole lot of Gorilla Glue. Alabama Shakes playing on Pandora. And maybe later there might even be a beer floating around in here somewhere. Uh, and we're going to toothpick every one of these holes. And I am... Could I get by with two? Yeah, I could get by with two. Would it be as strong as making sure there are three in every hole? No. Is the right way to put three in every hole? Yes. Will we put three in every hole? You bet. And some, they'll even be four. Um, I've tried to do this with various kinds of gloves and uh, this Gorilla Glue is just brutal once it attaches to your skin. You might as, you wear it for days and days. Um, so what I typically do now is we have these Curad exam gloves, at least what's left after we donated boxes and cases and cases of them to the local EMS. Um, that are, these are, I wear extra large, these are large. Once I get them on, uh, they're, they're like a second skin, so I can handle the toothpicks easily. Um, this red cup uh, is the part of the container that VC-17 uh, anti-fouling racing bottom paint uh, for fiberglass applications uh, is delivered in. And I save every one of these cups because we just use them over and over again. You can see, I think, right here how the, the glue from a past usage has cured. Well, it don't, won't stick to this thing. So what we do is let it cure and then go in there with a, a screwdriver or a or a, a chisel that we want to sacrifice and just pop it out and we can use it over and over and over again. These are, these are really great. Um, so I force three in every hole. It's not the best of all possible things to do on a, a Sunday, but it has to be done. We can't move forward unless and until we have toothpicked all of these holes. So I will continue putting in toothpicks, but I hope you'll get the main takeaway from this update on the 1956 Capri that people come to me all the time by telephone, by email, they even maybe sometimes send me a photograph saying, what's it going to cost me within 5% to get this boat preserved? And my answer always is, I'll tell you when I'm done. Because every one of these grand old dams is, now there's one that needs four, one of these grand old dams is hiding stuff under her skirts. This Capri was hiding what you see here. So if I said to somebody, it's going to be X, then I went back to them and said, oh my God, look what I just discovered. They said, well, you gave us a price, so just do it. Nah, I'm not going to give you a price. I can give you a ballpark. Uh, what on average it costs to restore a wooden boat, I'd say $40,000 and uh, to properly preserve a wooden boat, do the engine, upholstery, and all that kind of stuff. Um, some of them run 20, some of them run 200. It all depends on what she's hiding and what the owner is after and 
how it all works out. So on that note, I wish all the moms happy Mother's Day. We are still self-isolating, so our son and his wife are going to celebrate Mother's Day with Shirley remotely. Uh, they're lovers of FaceTime. It's not my favorite pastime. Um, and we'll do that. So, here's our update on the 1956, 19-foot Chris Craft Capri runabout on May 10, 2020, Mother's Day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now from Snake Mountain Boatworks.